Marissa May. In this video, we're going to take a look at some transformations on a trig graph. Now, I want to begin with the five key points we need to know with our sine graph. If you want to check out the previous video I did, I'll be sure and put it in the card so you can take a look at those five key points and some important information that you need to know about the sine, cosine, and tangent graphs. But to begin with our sine, we have five key points and they are 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and 2 pi 0. So we get this, what we call a sinusoidal curve, and this is just what we call one period or one cycle of the graph. After this, after 2 pi, the graph would begin to repeat by going up again. What we want to look at in this video is what happens to the graph when we put a number there in front of the sign in the equation. How does that affect these five points? Well, it's important to notice that the 2 is in front of the equation. It's actually in front of the sign, and that indicates to us that it affects the y values here. So what I like my students to do is to make themselves a note that they're going to multiply the y values by 2. Now I'm pointing this out because it's going to be different if that 2 moves to a new location. So we're going to take these five key points that you need to know for the sine graph and we're going to multiply every one of their y values by 2. Let me show you what I mean. We'll take the first point, 0, 0. If I multiply the y value by 2, I'm still going to get 0, 0. So that is a point on our new curve. Okay, now let's take the next one, which is pi over 2, 1. And if I multiply the y value by 2, I'll get pi over 2, 2. So pi over 2, 2. Every single point, I'm multiplying the y values by 2. Let me do the others. Again, I'm multiplying only the y values by 2. Um, 3 pi over 2, negative 1. If I multiply that y value by 2, I get 3 pi over 2, negative 2. 3 pi over 2, negative 2. And then, of course, 2 pi and 0. So you can see... The curve has the same shape, however, the, the highs and the lows, the max and the mins have been stretched. And we call that the amplitude. Let me show you the amplitude here is the height of the curve or the depth of the valley here. So in that case, in this curve, we would say that the amplitude is 2. Okay, whereas on the original curve, the amplitude was 1. The amplitude on the original sine curve is 1. And you can find the amplitude always in front of the trig function, whether it's sine or cosine doesn't make a difference. The amplitude is still going to be located in the same location. Now let me show you one more here. All right, another example here, we have y equals negative sine. So that negative one is going to affect the y values. So we're gonna take each of the points here and we're gonna multiply their y values by negative one. So we're gonna take zero, zero, multiply its y value by negative one. Take the pi over two, one, multiply its y value by negative one. And you can plot your points as you go. Take your pi, 0, multiply your y value by negative 1, and you still get pi, 0. 3 pi over 2, negative 1, is going to give you 3 pi over 2, 1. So here, and then of course, your 2 pi, 0 becomes 2 pi 0. And you get your sinusoidal curve again, but it's been reflected about the x-axis. 
Now you can see that why knowing these five points becomes really, really important because when I want to make changes with it, I need to know those points so I can multiply the y values by it. Now in this one, I want you to see that the amplitude is still one, okay? And that's because there's a negative one in front of the sign, but amplitude is always positive. Okay, so in my next example, I want you to see, we're gonna look at the sign graph still, but this time I've moved the two in front of the X. So now I'm looking for the graph of sine two X. Now, just like when we had the two in front, it affected the Y values. Well, I bet you can guess this two is gonna affect the X values, but probably not in the way you would think it would. Because the two is being multiplied by the X, something I like my students to remember is everything that's happening inside the trig function, we do the opposite of. So because I see being multiplied by two, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those X values and I'm gonna multiply by one half. Or I'm gonna take those X values and divide by two. Now you can think of it either way you want. I actually think multiplying by the half is just a little bit easier. So let's take our points, zero, zero. If we multiply X by one and a half, I'm gonna get zero, zero still. No surprise, okay? My next point, pi over two, one, if I multiply pi over two by one half, if you wanna to come to the side and do that so you can see it, I'm gonna get pi over four, or one fourth pi. Now let's think about where one fourth is, okay? So here's pi, here's half a pi, Here's a fourth of a pi, okay? So a fourth of a pi one would be right here. Yeah, okay, let's do pi zero. Now again, I'm multiplying my x's by a half. So pi divided by half is half a pi. So half a pi zero would be here. Then let's do three halves pi negative one. So do a half times three halves pi, and you'll get three fourths pi negative one, okay? So remember, this was a fourth of pi, half a pi, three fourths of a pi, and we're down at negative one. Last one is our two pi zero. If we multiply our x values by a half, I get pi zero. And here we go. So now, what has happened to the graph? What used to happen in the course of zero to two pi, a hill then valley, now gets accomplished between zero and pi, hill then valley. So what we have done is we have vertically compressed or we have changed the period. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that? Well, the period here, remember, the period is how long it takes for one cycle of the trig graph to happen. The period here was two pi. The period here is just pi. Some people like to know a formula for that and it's always two pi divided by that number in front of X. And that's how I got that the period was pi now. So you can see that we vert, sorry, we horizontally compressed the graph, right? Not vertically, we horizontally compressed the graph. We changed the period, we shortened it. Mm-hmm, yeah. And um, let's take a look then at maybe like a horizontal stretch. Okay, so you can see in this equation, now I'm looking to graph sine of one half x. Remember, whatever's happening inside with the x, we're gonna do the opposite of that to the x coordinates. So in this case, we're gonna multiply the x's by two. Mm -hmm. Instead of multiplying by a half, which I see, I'm gonna do the opposite of that which would be to multiply by two. 
So I'm going to take every one of these points, again, just reiterating why I need to know those five key points, because I'm doing so much with them. Um, that's why I always like to keep those five key points handy. And this time, remember, we're multiplying the x's by two. So zero, zero becomes pretty simple, zero, zero. And pi over two, one becomes pi one. Mm -hmm. Pi zero becomes two pi zero. Three pi over two negative one becomes three pi negative one. And then finally two pi zero becomes four pi zero. And so let's plot these points now. Zero, zero, pi one, 2 pi 0, 3 pi negative 1, and 4 pi 0. So we have stretched it out, right? We have taken what used to be covered in 0 to 2 pi, now we cover that in 0 to 4 pi. We have lengthened the period or how long it takes the graph to repeat. If you want to use our formula for the period for this, let me show you how that works. We have 2 pi divided by 1 half. And remember, you want to fractions. When you divide fractions, you flip the second one and multiply. So you've got 2 pi times 2 over 1. That's how you can see that the period here is 4 pi. Okay, let's put it all together now. You can see in this equation, I want to graph y equals negative 2 sine of 2x. So I've got two things going on here. Let's talk about what we're going to do with that negative 2. That's going to tell us to take the points over here and multiply the y's by negative 2. Okay, then we're going to take the 2 that's with the x and we're going to multiply the x's by 1 half. Okay, so we're going to have two things to do. We'll try to go slow so we'll keep them straight. <clears throat> Okay, so our first point is pretty simple. Zero, zero, multiply by two, multiply by half, does not matter, it's gonna give us zero, zero still. Let's look at pi over two, one, and we're multiplying the x's by a half. So one half times pi over two gives me one fourth pi. And multiplying the y's by negative two, one times negative two would give me negative two. Now, pi zero, multiply the x's by one half, gives me one half pi, and the y's by negative two, I still get zero there. Three pi over two, multiplied by a half, gives me three fourths pi, and then negative two times negative one gives me two, and finally two pi times a half gives me pi, and then zero times negative two gives me zero. So now we're ready to plot these points. 0, 0, pi over 1 fourth pi, negative 2. So remember, here's pi, here's half a pi, here's a fourth of a pi. Negative 2 is going to be down here. Half a pi, 0. 3 quarters of a pi, 2. And pi, 0 would be here. So now we've made both changes, right? We combine them, we've done both in the same equation. The amplitude now, is that two in front, right? Remember, amplitude must be positive. And our new period, we covered it all in pi. So I hope this helps you with horizontal and vertical shifts of trig graphs. You definitely could do the exact same thing with cosine. You'll just want to start with the five key points for cosine. So let me know if you have more questions or you'd like to see more videos like this. I'd be happy to help. Bye for now.